Hello and welcome to another episode of The Code of Career with me, Cameron Blackwood. My guest today is Ben Reed, who as well as being my colleague at Purple Bricks is a software engineer with nearly 15 years experience. Ben joins us today to talk about a variety of topics, including entrepreneurship, the evolution of JavaScript, and advice for new people getting into the industry and how they can go about it in 2021. Hopefully you get a lot of value for this episode, and if you enjoyed it, please make sure to join my Discord. The link for that is in the description. But without further ado, I hope you enjoy this week's episode of The Code of Career. Afternoon, Ben. Thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, I'm, I'll, I'll say very good, but I am coming, uh, just had a cold, so... I'm going to sound rather gruff and, and um, a bit bassy, so I <laughs> so apologise for that. That'll be interesting in the editing and mixing process, I'm sure the frequency analyzer will come through very bassy. Um, well, um, thanks for th- thanks for uh, battling through to uh, join me on the podcast today. I do Not appreciate all, it, mate. Uh, so for the uh, listeners that um, aren't familiar, obviously I'm very familiar with you because you're actually the tech lead on the project uh, we're both working on at our employer, Purple Bricks, at the moment. Uh, so we That's already right. know each other very well. Um, yeah. But do you want to explain to the listeners a bit about yourself, um, about your background and, and what you do? Yeah, I could do. So my name's yeah Ben Reed. Um, I am a senior developer at Purple Bricks. Um, as Cam said, you're um, tech lead on the current project. And it's it's been um, a great journey with, with Purple Bricks. We've been um, building up um, this suite of Next.js applications with um, NX, which is a monorepo tool. And it's been great. Like, that's my first journey, journey with monorepo. So that's been a nice adventure to see how you can standardize things across many different applications. That's been a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of learns on that. And, you know, Purple Bricks is just a great place to work, really in, enjoying it there. Um, so, so yeah, that's me, I guess. I don't know what else. Nice. <laughs> it's a resounding recommendation. And, uh, as I always say on the podcast, definitely check the purple bricks vacancies, uh, because I, I thoroughly endorse working here as well. I really enjoy it. Uh, and they're very supportive for the podcast, which is great. Um, so, uh, how, how I like to let the audience get to know you a bit better as well, Ben, is, uh, I like to fire through some quick fire questions. If you, if you're up for that, if that sounds good. Ooh, okay. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. First one is always an interesting one. What was your first ever computer? Uh, this I can answer straight away. It's, it was an uh, Apple Performer 5200. Now that's going to date me quite a bit. Um, <laughs> so this was in the, the dark old days of Apple before Steve Jobs return, returned. And um, everybody was like, don't get an Apple. Whatever you do, just do not get an Apple computer. They're going under it. They're going to sink. And, and, um, and this, this guy was like so pro Apple. Um, and it was like, no, no, they're, they're, they're awesome computers. You should really totally get an Apple. And uh, and so we did, and it, it was quite an expensive computer, but it really got me started. I mean, I'm, I I I absolutely killed that thing, uh, just tacking things to apart and playing games and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience, and, and really, you know, I don't I don't know how my journey to tech would have changed if I hadn't had that to sort of cut my teeth on. So so yeah, that was that was great. The first machines are always a always a special one. Be that uh, be that literally a computer or or a game console or something like that. There's there's always something that. Um, sort of lights that spark in someone who wants to become a developer mm-hmm. like for, for me it was um using this my, my dad's sort of windows 98 home system um and I, I i grew up in the kind of era where um broadband was coming in and i yeah, I, okay. I was very yeah i was very much like oh. um yeah like youtube and really? stuff like that popping oh, off wow, I was sort wow. of, yeah I, I would have been about <laughs> 11 12 maybe when youtube sort of properly came out and um, I, I was of that sort of era where the, where the sort of internet exploded and it just it just lit okay. a spark. To, well, uh, <laughs> get this, Cam. I'm gonna really I'm gonna really sound like an old funny daddy here because I can remember because something was wrong with that performer and uh, it meant that they sent me a 14.4k modem. And, oh and wow! That meant, so I mean, you know, and you'd hear all you'd, you'd do the connection and you'd hear all the beeps and boops and the, the sound that we were yeah. kind of familiar with if you search for it on the internet from the archives. And um, it was, and and that was that was a Sunday afternoon. My me and my friend said, let's try and get on the internet. You know, configuring <laughs> all of WinSock manually and TCP ICP protocols, and then eventually we download Mosaic. And all we could do was start watching it just line by line, creating the web page, mm. and we, it never finished because it was too slow and it hung up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but it was yeah, fun. It- 
it, it's it's crazy that um once we hit sort of the early noughties, how how, how quickly things big, um rapidly improved. Uh, but mm. I, I have I, I have vague memories of dial up um sort of just about and the memories of like mm-hmm. don't pick up the phone like yes <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah yeah you'll hang up you know I yeah. I I cost my mum three hundred pounds one month to cause the Basing Street. Like, Why are all these calls to Basing Stoke appearing on? Oh, that's the internet. She's like, "What?" <laughs> like that, that was the that was the end of it for me. You know, I bet no she was happy with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, no more pocket money, no more internet. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so over your years working in technology, what what what's your favourite tech city that you've visited, or either not visited, uh, just being curious about? Like, what there's a lot to choose from. Oh dearie me, how do I start with this one? So I, I guess. The, so I went to China a couple of times and, and what impressed me about the city I went to, Chengdu, was that my friend just said, look, come, come to this area. And um, it's, it's called Dian Naocheng, which is the, the, the computer city. And every shop there was so full of computers. And it's a couple of blocks in size. You know, it's not a small place, not a couple of shops here and there, but the whole place was full of every brand, every bit of tech you could imagine. And that was just one, one place and one relatively small city in China you know I'd, I'd really love to go and spend a bit more time in um oh, what's it called city the other one that's in the south oh. uh, is it Shenzhen one of my Shenzhen, other guests yes. Romeo was saying he, he's trying to go there at, um next as soon as pandemic is over he's going to try and get right. out there just because it's so uh, cool yeah I mean I saw recently this video of they they use Kubernetes to orchestrate a series of drones and and then they the, the, those drones could move in certain patterns and make shapes in, in the sky and everything that it looked so epic i was like i was so impressed with that technology you know yeah it it is pretty unbelievable when you when you read i mean personally i've never visited china but like having having read about um you know some of the exp- just what you can do out there you using using tech uh, uh mm. nabil who was on here a few weeks ago he, he actually ran an app studio out in china for two or three years um oh, wow. and he, okay. he was talking about just how how just how efficient everything is run and um you know mm. i i think i think we have some ha- definitely have some lessons uh to learn from uh from how yeah. quickly uh and how digitally native um <laughs> they, they adopt things uh out there so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah that's it's a good right. good cool china i might mm. be making this up didn't you teach yourself chinese as well i did i did learn chinese yeah so i just um i just got into the community and 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 you know, just learned from a couple of friends. And then they said, mm. oh, why don't you come and stay with me? And staying there was was my real, that was when my Chinese language really jumped. I mean, I'm I'm still like, I can't say I'm fluent. I'm not comfortable saying that I'm fluent in Chinese. Yeah. But <laughs> but um, yeah, I really enjoy the language and, and the culture. Like I'll still, I'll still make like a, a um, Chinese food whenever I can and, you know, just really enjoy it. So yeah, nice. hope to get back there at some point. Mm. Yeah, hope, hopefully after, after the pandemic when everything's chill out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's, sure, to, right? it's tonal language, isn't it? It's a very challenging one. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, you've, you, I, I don't. You, they can say the same word, um, about up to five different ways, and it can mean something totally different in each way. So you've got um, the, four, the five tones are like. So this, I'm going to say the same word five times in the tones. Ma 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 ma. So those oh, wow. are five different, <laughs> totally different meanings. But unless you're attuned to it, it can um, it can really throw you off. Yeah. And 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 sometimes you're like I, I was went to this uh, shore, store and bought a, um um sort of something to eat, and the the lady behind the checkout said Sukhoi Chen and and does, did you say four or ten because I couldn't tell with the tones I couldn't pick it up. I handed her a ten thinking she'd give me the right change and she just kept the lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay i'm gonna to have to listen a bit more carefully next time <laughs> yeah i mean that is um yeah a lot of potential for faux pas as well uh from the sense of it in that yes. case but it's um, also you can have a lot of fun with it as well you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean fair fair play i mean that's um that's pretty impressive to be able to put, pick, pick that up and what what about um i guess talking talk more code now or at least what helps you get through the code um when you're uh when when you're writing your code, what's your favorite kind of music to listen to, and what what sort of stuff were you listening to today when you coded? Because I know today oh, you're today. working on you're quite busy today. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, I was really really focused um, for a bit. And so yeah, my my go to artist is Mike Oldfield. Um, I, I do love a bit of prog rock. Um, so but, and I find that I can listen to Mike Oldfield, you know, like out of work and in work. Like I, it's funny. I I do tend to have two different music styles. One for when I'm listening to work and I need to focus, like usually you know more electronica and and um vaporwave and that kind of thing and then 
um, out of work, it, it's definitely more prog rock and a bit of folk and bluegrass as well. So it, it varies quite quite wild, wildly. But I, I find if I get a lot of vocals going on, um, a lot of heavy guitar, I can't really concentrate. So it's more the softness sort of stuff, like focus on you know what you're doing. Yeah, um, it has to know. be something that's going on in the in the background. I found the same thing. Like I, I found, um, I listen to a lot of like rock music, and it's quite difficult if it's quite something quite lyrical. Whereas, uh, like same as you, really, I tend to go towards the elect- uh, electronica stuff, like drum and bass and house and that kind of thing. While I'm while I'm coding, um, okay, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. or sometimes I'll just stick a YouTube mix on because there's all those like lo-fi beats for coding. Oh. Um, but I did one of those the other day, and it hit my recommended. Um, I was checking out that um, Glaswegian guy who's been quite famous uh, recently oh. for doing sea shanties, and uh, I was listening to oh, the lo-fi, yeah. and then <laughs> and then obviously it was YouTube <laughs> auto played in the background. <laughs> I'm coding this well about- sea shanties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that's going to affect your code, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it was a bit distracting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what What about when you're uh, writing the code? Would you say you're um, early early bird or a night owl? I know you've got young kids, so maybe it's not the most, uh, uh, maybe it's yeah. somewhat enforced either way. <laughs> that's it, yeah, absolutely. Now with the kids, um, I, I am restricted. Like, yeah, we, we, um, everything before 9 a.m. is kids and after... 5 p.m. as as kids but uh, generally I'm a morning person I I like to get up early and and sort of like have a nice cup of tea and then I find that I'm I'm most engaged at that point if I I have tried to code like like I get home and I want to do some personal project or something and I'll sit there once the kids have gone to bed and I'll fall asleep or or I'll just start coding something and I'll just like what am I doing so I usually give up by that point because uh, there's just no point doing it so uh, yeah I'm definitely a definitely a morning person still yeah i i think i think i'm the same I, I do definitely get some kind of mental switch when it gets dark outside um where i i struggle to code um i always struggle to get up in the morning so i have to really have to force myself if i want to if i want to get some work done and it's not the weekend on, on some side projects well, right. i have to force myself so kind of of neither really then. <laughs> yeah kind of neither um in theory i'm a morning person but i also don't like getting up so okay. it's a bit of a bit of a conflict there <laughs> that's a bit of a problem yeah yeah <laughs> away from code um what what job did you want if it, if you weren't going to be a software engineer when you were a kid what what job did you want to do and it can be as outlandish as possible i wanted to be a writer <laughs> Which is a really okay, nice. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, right, writer. Because um, I, mm. I, I really got, I just got really into like at one point during my life, I just like it was a bit of a, t- bit of a turmoil, and I just picked up one of uh, Scott Fitzgerald's books, This Side of Paradise, and I read it straight through. And from that point on, I was I was hooked on on literature, especially twentieth century classics like, uh, you know, Fitzgerald, Joyce, uh, people like that. Uh, Virginia Woolf and I just I just really wanted to be in that world and got more into the poetry sort of side of it um kind of realized it, it it's not it's, it's quite a difficult in terms of a career uh, to do that kind of thing yeah um yeah but that's how I started yeah <laughs> nice I was gonna yeah I was gonna say you're um whenever I work with you on uh with mock data and stuff if, I, if I'm ever like checking out a branch or something that you're working <laughs> on uh, the mock data is always very full compared to something like me where it's literally like I may as well have smack my head if it's a random string I may as well have smack my head on the keyboard it's just complete rubbish um whereas, whereas you're quoting stuff from like the great Gatsby and that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I've got to have my literary Easter eggs in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm picking up on them. So, uh, yeah, it's very nice. I, the thing is, there is a creative, like, I do try and be a bit more creative with my mock data. But, um, yeah, because mm. we're, we're working on uh, some stuff with, like, messaging at the moment. Um, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with all these, like, conversations to make it fun for myself oh, with mock data. Of like, um, you know, people, people like having outlandish requests about like, <laughs> are they allowed to bring their dog to the house viewing and stuff like that? Right. But, yes, uh, I saw that one. Yes. <laughs> oh, did you I, see that one? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I thought I deleted that from uh, <laughs> from our remote uh, repo, but apparently. Oh not. no, you didn't. Push up. <laughs> and, but it's funny. Our colleague Josh, who we work with as well, he 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 puts music lyrics into ah, his nice. as well so he he uses music lyrics so i thought it was quite creative as well you know <laughs> yeah that that is creative cool um and i i mean obviously now we, we're both software engineers uh rather than anything else we were potentially mm. um g- gonna be in life how what what journey did you take in into being a software engineer how, how did you end up doing this oh dude this is a this is a story um so it's a complete accident 
I, I didn't want to be in tech. Like I didn't particularly set out to be in tech, even though, you know, not, notwithstanding what I said before about the performer and hacking it to bits. Um, but I it, it kind of like I'd gone into, so I'd, I'd kind of gone away from the tech and I'd done lots of different things. I was um, an administrator for the recruitment agency Hayes. Um, I did lots of other bits and pieces. I was I was working as in a factory uh, as a cleaner, uh, kind of like lots of different types of things. Um, but when I moved down to London and got married to my darling wife Hannah, um, we we set up a com- I set up a company just doing graphic design because I kind of got a bit into that world um, before and and I really enjoyed it. You know, really just enjoyed messing about in Illustrator and Photoshop and 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 making something look nice. So I started up this company and and one of my first clients just said like, all right, I, as well as all the stuff that you're designing me here for my brand, I I need a website. I was like, oh, okay, how am I going to do this? So I, I just said, I uh, charged her a nominal fee um, and went ahead and, and just learned how to build a website. I mean, it, it was terrible. Don't get me wrong. It was awful. <laughs> and, it, and it took me ages as well to figure it all out. And I was still like half of it was in tables and half of it was was in using floats uh, for the CSS. And it was just a static site, but it got me got me into it. And, and um, from there on, you know, most of my business became building websites for people. Um, so I, I got into into WordPress and and um, CMSs, and then started to really you know build up my own business. But unfortunately, it got killed by the credit crunch. Uh, um, everything sort of like just died one day, and I didn't understand why until a, a couple of weeks later. Um, but then I managed to get a job for this company, this a, um, agency, Blaze Communication in Enfield. Um, worked for a couple of other agencies, um, Edge Design, which is really cool, and and then Indigo Tree in Berkhamsted. And and then, which from... is where I went to school, funnily enough. Oh, is so it? No way. I would have been. No yeah, way. I can't remember <laughs> mention this. Down but the road. For me. Actually, I think I did because we we were joking about it, saying I was probably hanging around in school when you were literally wor- working that's down right. the road. Yeah, probably passing in my car on the way home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's mental, isn't it? Sure, small world, Cam. That's crazy. But um, but yeah, no. So so like uh, the interesting thing about uh, them was there's like all these sites like React was going through a, a massive change and there was a lot more ecosystem building up around it. And um, and Gatsby started, you know, just was, you started to get on Gatsby JS, which is kind of a similar platform to, to Next.js. Um, and it, it and I got really into Gatsby and I started really creating things with that. And that's that's when I got into, like my next big break was then SOPA, um, the, um, the bank. And, um, and, and yeah, I had a really blast there. Um, really enjoyed it, met some awesome people and, and uh, yeah, and that's that's kind of like the career. That's my, my previous job now at Purple Bricks. So yeah, nice. It's uh, it's a it's a cool way you got into it because you basically got into it by winning. It's very wild west. So you win the contract, <laughs> and you're like, now I'll yes. learn to code. I love yes, that. Um, exactly. I really love yeah, that yeah. approach. And it's like, <laughs> um, you know, uh, we'll promise it now, and then we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so that yeah, that's a exactly. really cool way of learning. And then the real MVP. I, yeah, I love that because you go, most people get the first job in code, go PAYE and then maybe become a contractor, maybe set up their own business. Right, but right. Um, I love that you go set up the business first and then, and then go that way. That's the best way to learn, I bet. Because <laughs> yeah. like, there's no one, to, no one to ask for help. You've got to do it all yourself. So Absolutely. You're going to learn. Yeah. <laughs> I spent so many times looking things up on blogs and just hacking it and, and just, why won't this work? I wanted yeah. to throw my computer out of the window. <laughs> But yeah, ultimately, it, it, it was enough for her. To, she was quite satisfied with it. I mean, I'm not going to tell you the website, right? Because I don't want you to visit it. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. It's still live. And she's still getting, you know, uh, traffic off it and, and, and new business. So, you know, yeah, it, I mean, that's, that's what I find that, that, that you know, some people I encounter, they, they're so nervous. They say, oh, I really w- must know everything about uh, this framework or that or everything about JavaScript before I, I get a job in tech because otherwise I won't know what I'm doing. None of us know really what we're doing. Okay, it, just put that aside. We've, we've just got to, yeah, you've just got to do your best with what you know, just practice um, building some stuff. However that is, if, if, it's, um, if it's on the job, if it's on by getting a contract to build something, then, then, then go ahead and do it. I think that's the best way to learn because it's, it's real world problems that you're solving then. It's, it's not something that's fictitious and made up and maybe it's a little bit... Um, um, unrelated could be to to what you actually ultimately will be doing. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a really good point, and this is something that I, I would always encourage to people because the thing is, it's stuff like free code camp is awesome, right? But 
you've got an integrated IDE, and this was my problem when I learned to code. Um, you've got an integrated IDE in, in the web browser. I, I, I wasn't, I'd never used VS Code. Um, and I'm solving small scale problems. That's great for learning the basics. But if you're trying to get to the, the, the issue with getting first job, it's the zero to one problem. It's a chicken and egg thing, experience first job. If your only experience is solving get X out of this array, like here's the array, you know, you're, and, and basically your, your, your sort of console is just next, is in a Chrome window. It's, it's really, it's very unlikely that you're going to be asked, you're going to be asked by a client to do something like that. It's probably something that will come up at some point when you're coding, like say you're doing a map statement in, in React, like that was something I was doing today. Um, and yeah, I am. I, I was figuring, I was filtering stuff out of an yeah, array. Great. But there you go. Like yeah. yeah, so it's useful in that respect. But when I was learning by myself, I wouldn't have had a clue what a legitimate use case of a, of, of a map was in terms of like business. You need to think of people who are learning to code need to think of it with like a, the commercial um, side of mind. So something I would always suggest to people is if there's some kind of really small minor problem um, that you think of that you could that you think needs to be solved and you reckon you could solve it relatively easily, try and write some code for it. doesn't matter if it's perfect. doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't matter if it's a bit rough around the edges because that's the sort of thing that will impress employers um, to get that first job. And also as well, it gives you the real world experience of like thinking, right, what's the problem here? I can solve it. Definitely practice using stuff like GitHub issues, um, use a Trello board to track it because people don't think about stuff like uh, I'm really going on a tangent here, but people don't really think about like project management stuff that that you get involved in. Yeah, when you're a dad. that's cool. Yeah, Jira. Like a lot of people don't have a clue mm, what it is. I know yes, I did. Jira and, and all that. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. really tricky to, to to get to grips with sometimes the terminology. Like I didn't have a clue what a retro was when I took part in my first one. Just kind of smiled and nodded through the whole thing. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here, mate. Same here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You let, that's it. You know, there's, you know, yeah, there's, there's a lot that you know. You just have to experience before you really, you know, can you, you can say that you know it well. And and it, so you know, yeah, you just got to dive in there. I think. Yeah. You know, don't don't worry you, about. You never it feel much. ready. So the wor the worst ready, anyone yeah. can say to you is like is is, is no really in in a job application. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely yeah, try and get some right. real world practice. Um, you know, even if maybe that's like helping a friend build a website or something like that, try and get some, or, mm. or thinking probably needs to be solved, try and get some real world practice and then, then. Um, so obviously we're talking about how to get the first job, uh, but you, you've also previously talked about how you've got to point where you're at now. How would you say the industry is like involved during the time that you've worked within it? And what would you advise to devs who, um, want to make sure they can roll with the punches because obviously you've been in you've been in the world of sort of javascript where standards have changed like different popular libraries have changed what what would you say to someone who wants to be able to roll with the punches i can't think about this um so a couple of things like what really helped me was was uh being in touch with people who really knew their stuff and who i could learn from like um i, I must give a shout out to to chris geary and um and david hewitt from who work, i worked with at indigo tree they they just loved loved it, what they were doing and they were just so happy to impart it to to me. You know, like Dave was always like, Oh yeah, you've got to try this out and you've got to see the new Equa skipped um uh um stuff because it's really cool and what you can do now. And it was it was that their enthusiasm that really, really helped me to to pick things up. And I think I think that's it. It's it's building your own community so you know you know people. Um and um and and there there then you will be able to just like you'll anticipate it because you'll be excited about it yourself you know um and and also if you've got like a couple of personal projects online if you're able to do that then you can see oh okay I can, maybe i can rebuild it with that thing or this thing that you've just come across so it helps it does help to have um a couple of projects like i've always, i'm always doing some side project or other some something some little site um and and i think you know i keep coming up across new things i think oh maybe i can do that now with this and and it kind of just, just helps you to you've got to kind of like make it i i hesitate to say this because it's not possible for everybody right but but i've made uh javascript development my hobby as well as my job and 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 therefore it's it's helped me a lot because because i really enjoy what i do and and i kind of like i'm always on twitter i'm always checking out um, what other people in the industry are saying and, and are getting excited about and um reading newsletters i've got like about 30 or 40 newsletter subscriptions was a slightly excessive 
but it always <laughs> helps helps me to sort of see where gauge where the industry is yeah what everybody's getting mad about and and also what what new stuff is coming in and 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 that i find that really interesting you know it's not possible for everybody to do that and everybody's situation is different but that that was that's what's worked for me anyway yeah that that sounds sounds like very solid advice just keeping yeah uh, the newsletter piece is good as well because then you don't have to um don't have to seek it out just literally deliver to your inbox mm, yes. which is which is just yeah. handy sort of thing you can just read when you you know um maybe on the train if you're one of those souls that still has to commute um but uh we, we're all right we, we just work remote so yeah. we're, we're fine um it's something i can something i can get as i roll out of bed at 8 59 in the morning um no i don't really know i don't really do that because we have a stand up at nine uh but <laughs> i was gonna say yeah you sound a bit more like with it than uh <laughs> i imagine you would if you had just rolled out of bed that minute so, yeah you know. <laughs> i'm a good actor what can i say um yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I, I guess in in terms of as well as evolving with the industry, um, how would you say you kind of ascended the ladder, getting to the point now where you're kind of a senior engineer slash tech mm-hmm. lead? Um, what strategies did you did you employ? Was it very much just keeping up with stuff, or, or is there other things people need to focus on as well? I can answer this in one word: trust. Um, if you if what I found is like companies that have allowed me to to reach out for other things to do more stuff like that's why I love purple bricks so much it's really like they trust you to to reach out and do things like um to do things on the infrastructure and and um to to really be tech lead and and take that on board it's been a great experience I must say I've really enjoyed that that aspect of it but but that's you know kind of like you've you've got to find the right companies that will are willing to sort of like give you that that leeway uh, and not be watching you back every five minutes, like what's he yeah. doing now? You know, that kind of thing. I mean, that's a horrible situation to have to find yourselves in. But um, what I would say is don't stay at those companies. You know, there's plenty of better companies out there that, that have, um, that trust their employees that really want you to exceed uh, Excel and want you to do really well. Uh, and it's, you've got to find those companies and stick with them because they're, you know, yeah. The thing is the market's too much in our favor for, to have to put up with that stuff. Really, like I, I hate to be. I know that might come across as an arrogant thing to say, but it's just the reality of the situation. Like there are so many unfilled developer jobs in the UK right now, especially mm-hmm. with COVID nineteen. You know, a lot of companies got remote. Um, neither of us, you know, our company HQ is in Birmingham. You're you're down in the southeast of England. I'm up in Scotland. Like you know, you can you can really work from anywhere, and yeah. we're, we're trusted to do so. So it's it's just yeah, being trusted is just such a way to supercharge. Um, your own career because uh, the thing is if you're you know if a company trusts you and you don't and you're clearly not it's obvious when someone's not working you know Um, so it's one of those things that's just yeah uh, it's a really good thing to uh, really good thing to have yeah 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 that's it absolutely yeah so something we've talked about a lot is how great this industry is obviously um but not everyone that listens to this has already broken into the industry they might be aspiring to do to do it or they might have no idea how to even get started the example I like to use here is what would you say to uh, a relative of yours, say like a niece or a nephew that has just like left school um, and, and has come to you and said, I want to get into technology. Uh, what would you say to them um, to, to, to advise? Well, I, I, I mean, I think I would say just get stuck in, get, get building something, you know, take like my career in, in web dev has been totally self-motivated. Um, and I didn't feel it necessary to go to uni at any point or, or uh, to pick up those skills. The thing I think it does have its place, and and with some careers uh, in in the, in our industry, it would be really good. But uh, but for me, it it, it you know it, I think it takes time to build up a curriculum. Is, is what I'm trying to say is that yeah. You no know, you, you practice current practices now. Then if you if somebody's asked to write a curriculum on those practices, it's what it's going to take them a year or two years. By the time that curriculum is been released and people start taking it the technology has changed you know react hooks you know so much has changed yeah. with react alone in the last couple of years you know you just think how how fast can they they turn it around so i, th- I think for, for front-end development in particular just you just have to dig in you just have to get started on yourself and just start hacking around building yourself a couple of sites um seeing what you can do with apis um you know build the the old to-do apps in in something just just give it a shot and um and you'll pick it up and it, it will just you'll 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 learn um as you go along with with things like that and you know and don't worry about any supposed gaps you might find um because they'll be filled in 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 time 
w- would you suggest in that case then um, people maybe uh, it's always a controversial question maybe avoid the university route and go down the apprenticeship route for engineering uh, for software engineering these days um, what I mean I know it's a bit it depends on the person a little bit but what what would your instinct be to, for that well I, I mean I've, I've always got this thing like you know my opinion isn't necessarily the right opinion so feel free to disagree <laughs> but um, but for myself I would I would not choose to go the university route, you know, um, and I and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, of course, with that, you've got to admit that it takes a certain kind of person. Like you've got to be very self motivated. Like if if you if you don't have that self motivation, then it's going to be a lot harder. Um, but you can acquire that as well. So so um, you know it, that that's you know that's that's my opinion. <laughs> I'm quite happy to to be um, to, for other people to to say differently on that because you know. Uh, all different yeah it, it's an interesting question and um I, I i did go to university but um as, as people who listen to the podcast know i i didn't do a computer science degree i, I did a business one um and i don't regret it weirdly and this is extremely controversial i actually think in a lot of ways my business degree is far more useful than a computer science degree as a developer and i it sounds so back to front but i lived with computer science students i played on their football team i know what their curriculum was all about and it was all stuff with like C and that kind of thing. I've never touched C or anything like it, uh, working as a, as, as a modern web developer. And actually what I do need to know about is project management, delivering for a client and understanding what's marketable. And I, I work mainly on the front end. So understanding good user experience and, and customer retention, um, which comes from my degree. So I actually think that... Um, it, 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 if people are interested in, in going to university, then you don't even necessarily need to study computer science because if you study, say, a business degree uh, and you learn to code, you know, maybe do some computer science modules, but also just learn to code while, while you're at uni, you could do something like set up your own company while in uni and then and then you're absolutely laughing because that... The, the great thing about university is is because you often have a, um, especially if you're doing business, uh, a somewhat liberal schedule, um, you will have a lot of time to set up, um, you know, some kind of startup. So it's a good opportunity to network and that kind of thing. But if if we're talking like pure career building, I, w- I would say apprent- I would go down the apprenticeship route. But um, in my sort of like wacky way that i've mumbled my way into software engineering <laughs> um then i, I yeah <laughs> I've, I've quite i i i've i feel like doing a business degree was accidentally a very good move uh in that respect <laughs> yeah you know you, you you've got a point there actually because um yeah you know it's quite often with like i've done i've done like a, a, a fair bit of marketing as well and um it it's that's that has really helped because again you know it's the same sort of skill set isn't it knowing knowing how to to sell an idea maybe you know you want to take take oh we should use this technology we should use spelt instead of react so how do you take that to your manager how do you how do you justify that and and that's quite often that's coming quite handy having those kind of like uh you know how to how to build a case you know or you need to debug something then how how do you go about solving problems it's it's those kind of things that yeah it's been quite useful so yeah i think you're you mm. onto something there yeah go, go for the law degree if you really want to debate debate <laughs> stuff or something like that. Oh, heck. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah I, I guess the the kind of beauty of the conversation we've just had as well is it just goes to show the amount of different approaches you can take to get into the industry and it's not a one-size-fits-all and um I, i'm really glad that they've uh the the i say they in general the tech industry has stopped um requiring degrees for for everything um like it's very rare i've noticed these days to need a computer science degree to to get a developer job especially for web development like obviously it's a bit different if you're doing something like i don't know if you're a computer vision engineer then uh in my recruiter days for instance i used to recruit some of them for a client of mine and obviously that's a different situation um, but yeah, being a sort of standard web developer, I, I think it's a good thing. They're dropping the degree requirement a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad about that. I must say like, you know, personally, I, I kind of like, like, it's so funny because that's not always, they say it's, it's a requirement, but I have gone for jobs before that have said it's a requirement to have a CS degree. And, um, you know, sometimes it has progressed a little bit, you know, it, it hasn't necessarily been, oh, no, you don't have a degree, you have to go. And I clearly state that on my on my CV, there's no there's no evidence of the, you know, education is just like one line. So it's kind of, um, you know, it, it, it it's not necessarily a requirement if it's a requirement, you know? Yeah, that's what that's the thing. That's about a very the, good point. 
job descriptions in this industry, it's like they'll have a list of things, you know, React, you know, um, hooks, um, Redux. And it's not all requirements. It's just like it's it's almost like it's nice to have. And and kind of like if you hit like 40 or 50 or maybe 60 percent of that, then you're good to go. You know, you don't have to have all of them. I don't feel that you can't apply just because you don't have all of them. Yeah, and and it's one of those things. You know, you can demonstrate your aptitude for for, for learning, and um, yeah, it's very it's so rare that someone's going like my recruiter days. No one's ever going to hit a hundred percent of the requirements every single time. Like you're looking for the best compromise, and you know whether that may be someone who um, let's say is a very experienced engineer but hasn't worked with React before. Or maybe they're a junior person who maybe isn't as wide, more widely experienced, but they're really hungry for React and they know uh, and they already know a lot about it. So, just to, just to give those as examples, like um, yeah, so never ever be uh, for the listeners, never ever be put off applying for stuff, and don't ever filter yourself out of um, uh, filter yourself out of job requirements because imposter syndrome is real and it, it comes comes to haunt us all. And job descriptions can sometimes really hurt that when you're when you're looking for a job, especially the first one. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I can say truly say that that the imposter syndrome it still gets me in a senior developer. You know, it still, it still hits. <laughs> so it's never, nice to know it never, never goes away. Then <laughs> it never goes away. You always have to deal with it. But um, but yeah, like like don't don't let it stop you. Don't let it hold you back. Absolutely, yeah. That that that's sage advice. And um, w- would you say um, o- over your career in, in engineering, is there is there anything that you regret or anything you would change, or or is it uh, are you happy with uh, kind of the party took us there? Uh, I mean, other than saying like, oh, I wish I was on the core Bitcoin team in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody would say yes to that. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, it's um, so I guess there's two two things I wanted to say here, and it's flip sides of the same coin. Because, you know, I've been quite ambitious. I've quite often changed jobs um, within a fairly short space of time because I could see an advantage to doing so. Um, so, so sometimes that means that I've jumped into things without being properly prepared, like I went to an interview once and uh, they took me on and and I clearly wasn't qualified for the job. <laughs> you know, of <laughs> course, th- their interview process was a lot, left a lot to be desired. You know, it was just a quick chat, five minutes, you know. But, um, you know, I, I took on that job and I didn't really fully consider what I was doing. So I think that um, that left me a bit high and dry. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't, obviously I didn't get to stay there and I had to look for somewhere else. Uh, some of the great things came out of it. Um, but but it you know it was kind of unfortunate that I'd lost 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 the security of that at the time. But on the flip side, I don't entirely regret it because without that, I wouldn't be where I am now. If you see what I mean, like quite often I've uh, I've seen how far I can go and personally develop myself and my coding skills and my career. And then if if I feel like I've I've reached the maximum of what I can achieve, then then I'll, I'll and I can't I can't forward that agenda my agenda um in the current company then i'll I'll move on to something else and and that's nearly always like helped helped me because i've been able to get somewhere else that i've I've enjoyed more it's challenged me more okay i've i've really had some scrapes like trying to learn stuff on on the job and trying to make sure that um and and level up uh, to things but on the other hand it's also really helped me to progress fast because for me i'm i'm never going to do it unless i really launch myself into it like I, I kind of like I have to I have to push myself, otherwise I'll just sit on my laurels, you know. So I know that's for me, that's the way that it, it kind of works, you know. But but on the other hand, I have stayed longer term with companies that have been willing to, you know, encourage me on and help me and and sort of see where else where else I can develop my skills and what other responsibilities I can take on at, at that time, you know. So yeah, yeah. I I I would say on my side as well. It's like always. Um, it's not so much a regret or or, or a change. It's more just so lo- more like. Uh, uh, advice for uh, people that maybe in their in their first dev job, um, you know, uh, you need to keep learning. Like I kind of got caught mm, up in the excitement yeah. and stopped learning a little bit other than the stuff I was doing on a job. And actually, it's a good idea to uh, keep advancing your skills um, and and that sort of thing. And uh, I mean, it turned out I had to learn Angular um, very quickly anyway. So then that became my whole thing man, because <laughs> Angular Angular runs off TypeScript. I had to learn TypeScript, yes, which right. is so mm-hmm. helpful. 
because I was terrified of TypeScript and it's so oh, easy. Great. Like, what's there the big go. deal? Like, um, yes, yeah. Yes. Like, uh, <laughs> it's such a specific thing to talk about. And if you haven't got into tech yet, then you won't have a clue yes. what we're talking about here. But yeah, don't be afraid to adopt TypeScript. TypeScript is your friend. Uh, yes, it, uh, that's great. <laughs> It is great. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, it terrified me. It really terrified me to start with. Like, I, I, I felt it was a, a so inaccessible. Um, and, I, and I think that was TypeScript at the time. Lots of, um, you know, single word, you know, like, um, oh, what's it called? Um, I've forgotten. Mine's gone blank. Anyway, you know, lots of li different, like, obscure ways of referring to types. Whereas now you've got a lot more expression in inside TypeScript and, and it, they encourage us to name things in a way that's going to be helpful to the next person. Whereas before it was just T or well, what's T, you know, I've no idea. What T yeah. Is. It's so but, much easier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now it's, it's a lot more helpful. So it, it, it can seem like a bit of a brick wall to start with, but um, again, launch yourself into it because um, yeah. now, yeah, my, my IDE tells me when I've made a mistake before I even run the code. It's so much um, a faster feedback loop. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to know dynamically and statically typed languages. Mm. Um, you know, when I was a recruiter, uh, this is embarrassing. Um, I feel like Thank it's a God. common theme in the podcast so far is me saying, oh, you know, when I was a recruiter, wait, this is embarrassing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I used to um, I, I used to think dynamically and statically typed languages were like the method that you literally typed on the keyboard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well i can see that i can see yeah. that no typing, typing. it completely yeah. baffled me yeah, yeah. um it was like yeah. oh javascript is a dynamically typed language like okay does that mean like uh dynamically does that mean it changes how like when you're typing it does it change like i thought maybe that means it auto completes wow. um okay. so that's cool okay. like <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah that's very different um, but yeah, no naming things, right? You know, typings, typings. Yeah, it's it's not it's not the easiest thing. It's definitely one of the hardest things in tech. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um, I, I I guess to kind of uh, wrap wrap things up uh, um, a, a little bit. Are you are you working on anything uh, exciting at the moment? You want you want to shout out? Um, learning anything new or any, anything new in the, the blog sphere? Oh yes, um, the Astro dot build. Check it out. Um, I really like this. It's so okay. So Astro is a new framework which allows you to um, write websites in JavaScript. So it's it's a JavaScript based thing, but then it, it compiles to HTML, and and it, what it means is that you can add interactivity as you're going along. So you're not rehydrating the whole of your DOM with JavaScript. You're selectively hydrating only the parts that you need to have interactivity. So at the moment with everything except Next.js's SSG thing, you, you have to rehydrate. So you have to replace the whole HTML with your JavaScript version of the HTML. And, and that's kind of a pain. I, I really don't like the performance hits that that is, especially for people that are on slower connections in, in different countries and that kind of thing. So I'm really all for the performance. And I think Astro is a great way forward because yeah, you can specify that you want this component to load when the main process is idle or when the, it's in the viewport, you know, which is which is great. It gives you so many options. So I really, I really like that. And then this other framework, which is called Webiny. Um, Webiny is is a um, okay. So it's it can be a CMS, but it's also um, a framework for serverless applications. So instead of being hosted on one um, one container, one VM, one Docker, one Kubernetes cluster, this thing is propagated in the cloud. Um, and you can use it on AWS at the moment, but they're they're building it for Azure and other providers as well. So you'll be able to throw up your your infrastructure, and, and like there's certain problems that it's overcome for you, like um, like how to run lambdas just just once, and how to store images and, and keep the index up to, up to date, and things like that. So so Webinary is is great for that because it it just allows you to get a good good level up on the back end. Um, it's got its own um, headless CMS, um, page builder, form builder, that kind of thing. And I'm really excited with the product. It's, it's a very young, very small team at the moment. But um, yeah, really, really excited to see what they achieve with, with that. Nice. I was just, I don't know if you could tell, I was having a cheeky look through the Where documentation. I can hear your them. keyboard yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah that, that, those both look really cool. Uh, I'll have to, um, yeah. I, I'm sort of in a... Uh, persistent state of building the code of career website because i i'm really not taking my own advice where it's mm. you know just do it 
uh like right. I, I i i'm sort of getting hung up over like little things and like, i really need to stop doing that um and it, right. i've been configuring it's a challenge um, yeah, I need to deploy it, and I'm like trying to think. Oh, oh, where, most where cost-efficient way to deploy it. Yeah, I think yes. you know, I'm being very, uh, I'm being, I'm, I think I'm maybe thinking too much about maybe slightly overestimating how many visitors I may get per month. <laughs> <laughs> we all do it. Um, yeah, <laughs> you never know; it might really like, take off. <laughs> oh, what happens if a hundred thousand concurrent users try and go on the code of career? Like, settle down, Cam. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Go quite that far. We'll try and hit triple figure listeners for the yeah. podcast first, and then we'll worry about that. <laughs> but no, I mean, as for scale, like I, that's what I'm, I'm really interested in serverless because it allows you to scale a lot more easily. Like serverless functions, way to go, because you, you don't have to also manage the infrastructure. Like uh, I always find it a pain when you've got like, oh, the the pods are not healthy, or the pods need recycling, or the pods are down, or something. But but with serverless, it's just okay. This is my function. It's running. It's not running. And that's, that's yeah. all I need to care about it, you know, and, and how much it costs me. Um, but it, it's which is a small amount because you get a lot, a lot free with uh, with these providers. Um, and for a smaller site, it's quite manageable. And free, free is always good, right? Like uh, you it's can great. always build a lot of stuff with a free stack. Um, yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, uh, well, uh, yeah. that's another another good piece of advice is if it's just <laughs> use the free tools, use the free tier because yeah. chances are it'll probably be fine. Um, and it, yeah, if you're getting yeah, to the point where you need to, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't really be getting to the point where you have to pay if you're not getting revenue in anyway. So, um, yeah, yeah, unless you're that's doing something point. pretty wacky. Um, yeah, for but, sure. But, like, like I've been using Heroku a lot because I, I really mm-hmm. like that. I can I can install my my CMS the, the back end on onto Heroku, then it then when it's not being used, it can just sleep. And because my front ends are pre-built as well, so they're static files, it doesn't matter that it's not running. You know, I don't need to contact the CMS until I've got a new post that I want to release or an update, and it just works independently of it. So so for me, it's been a very cost-effective uh, thing to use. Rocket does has it, have its little uh, foibles, um, but I really like it as a tool because it's, it's free and it's, you know, you can, you can throw in a, you know, quite a lot of stuff up, up on it and not be charged a thing, so... I think we might need to chat deployment strategies when we're offline because I, I'd be curious to get your opinion on 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 how I should do about the code okay. of career uh, yeah. website. All right, cool, man. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully, hopefully by the time this podcast is out, the website's up. But I've been saying that since episode <laughs> one, and if, uh, if and if we stick to the schedule, this will be episode eleven, I think. So <laughs> right, and and this is like, but that, like this is the kind of thing why you should get other people to tell you what to build. Because if you're yeah. telling yourself what to build, it's so difficult. Like I've I've got like several different projects, and the hardest part of it is actually just deciding what to do. Like where should this UI be? What should it look like? You know, because I can't make that decision for me. Somebody else has to almost tell me. You know, yeah, I want this, or I don't want that. You know, and then give me some guide guidelines about that. And 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 that's why it's helpful to just launch yourself into it because doing it by yourself is so much more difficult. You can't. There are certain questions you can't answer. You need somebody else's input. So, yeah. Yeah. Stuck uh, in. Absolutely. Jump in. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Jump in. That that's how you can <laughs> sum up today's episode of the podcast. Is do not be afraid to jump in. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks so much, Ben, for um, taking the time out to speak with me. Because uh, um, yeah, I I know I, I know you've been really busy. So and uh, oh, and I know you're on holiday yeah. at the moment. So um, yeah, I, I especially yes. appreciate you taking the time out. <laughs> oh, and, um, thanks, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, nice to have a chat uh, yeah. as well. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, also, you have the honor of being the first um, Pub Bricks uh, colleague to, to come on the pod, well, hey, first of many, I think. I'm, I've already put I? a few messages out. Yeah. Well, if I speak so, to Daniel Beck, then I'm happy. That's cool. Dan is scheduled for the week after this. So, unless <laughs> oh, I need okay. to jumble apart the schedule, you have beaten Dan. Uh, so, <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> so, there's a spoiler. Listeners can look out for Dan Beck's <laughs> episode coming soon. Um, Alrighty then. Cool. So, thank you for listening to this week's episode of The Code of Career. Um, my name has been Cam Blackwood, uh, and my guest today has been Ben Reed. You can contact us on the links in the description. You can email me directly any questions you want me to answer in a future QA episode on the code of career at gmail.com. But until then, thanks so much for listening and see you next Monday. Cheers.